Welcome to this tutorial on lighting and night flying with a Harrier. We're going to start with the internal lighting of the cockpit. Then we're going to look at the external lighting. And finally, we're going to cover off some of the systems we can use at night, such as night vision and the forward looking infrared. So let's make a start. Welcome to Tinian Island in the Pacific and it's 1am local time so pretty dark. The first thing we're going to need to do to start the aircraft up is to bring out our torch or flashlight if you're American and by default that's accessed using left alt and L. To access any other lighting, we're going to need to turn on the battery and either ground power, the APU or the engine. So let's call up some ground power. Copy. Now that we have ground power, we can start to turn on the aircraft lighting. And we'll get the floodlights on first as that lets us see most other things. But we turn those off once we're ready to taxi. Now we can turn off our torch. Each of the floodlights can be moved around so you can light up where you need to see. These controls are for the front instrument panel, the console lights, both of which you would leave on for flight at night time, and the warning lights, which control the brightness of your master warning and caution advisories. But to be honest, there isn't much difference between fully bright and fully dim for these. Each of the MFDs has a brightness control which doubles as an on off switch, as does the main panel and the EDP has a brightness control as well. We also have a HUD brightness and we also have a HUD day night auto switch. For the HUD flare, this must be in night mode and the flare must be on. So let's turn that on now and we'll come back to the HUD flare shortly. And that's it for interior lighting. So let's now look at the exterior lighting. All exterior lights are controlled by the exterior light mode switch here, with the bizarre exception of the auxiliary wheel light, which is independent of the mode switch. It has three positions, normal, night vision and off. In night vision mode, the formation light brightness will be reduced and the position lights will be turned off. All of the lighting is the same as normal mode. Each light also has its own individual control. We have the formation lights, which are dimmable. The position lights, which have two brightness levels and the anti-collision lights. This is the auxiliary wheel light I just mentioned and up here are the landing and taxi lights. One other light is the yaw vane on the nose and this is directly controlled by the mode switch and turns on in both normal and night vision modes. So we'll run through all of those now from the outside. 
These are the formation lights. Now the position lights, port is red, green is starboard and white is the center. And the anti-collision lights. The auxiliary wheel light. And the taxi and slightly brighter landing lights. Let's now pop back inside the cockpit and look at the hood flare and also night vision. Okay, we're back on board. So let's now take a look at the night vision goggles, first of all. These, of course, let you see all around pretty well at night. And there are brightness controls, which can be increased to help you see outside a little bit better but cause a lot of bloom inside the cockpit and that can be quite distracting. Reducing the brightness reduces that bloom but obviously decreases your visibility outside. So you need to find the right balance. In 2D mode you can look around the illuminated area which is quite useful but in VR you don't have that option so it's probably a good idea to have a hot ass button mapped so you can turn your goggles on and off quickly. The MFDs have their own brightness controls which can be reduced and they also have a day night mode which can help reduce bloom when using goggles. Additionally contrast and gain can be tweaked to give you the best possible image. You're not really going to be able to use the moving map though with goggles on. With the right settings it's just about usable but then your outside brightness is likely to be turned down quite a lot so it's probably not ideal. The hood also has a brightness control and it also has a day mode, a night mode and an auto mode. To use the hood flare you've got to be in night mode not day or auto and we'll come to the hood flare in a second. The aircraft also has a built-in flare on the nose which can be displayed on an MFD. And again we can tweak the brightness, contrast and gain. If you have a teapot fitted that also has a similar function called nav mode and is accessed by pressing the super wide field of view button for more than 0.8 seconds. This has a better image quality than the flare but it can be sensitive to brightness and contrast. The teapot though has a wider field of view and it's also stabilized in the roll axis as you can see. But the real ace up the Harrier sleeve is the hood flare which is accessed by depressing the sensor control switch long and this displays the flare image directly to the hood. The field of view is limited of course but the image quality is generally far better than night vision goggles. You can use the night vision goggles in tandem but the goggles do distort the flare image somewhat. There are times when the goggles have a better image quality, such as open oceans or higher altitudes, but the flare excels at low level and also near built up areas, so it's superb for low level attack runs at treetop height. 
workflow hotspots are of course replicated to the HUD, which is incredibly useful for finding targets, especially at night. Once located, you can reduce the hotspots from 8 to 4 to none using OSB 19. And this can be useful for precision bombing as uh, sometimes the hotspots can be a little bit distracting. One other thing to mention is that the FLIR has a relatively low refresh rate, so it can sometimes appear laggy. So you do need to be aware of that and have a little bit of caution if doing high speed manoeuvring. That just about wraps up this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. If so, please do hit like and subscribe. And also feel free to leave comments and ask questions. Meanwhile, I'm off on an OCA strike with some seed cover.
pull up, pull up.